It is good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen? Amen. And we do welcome each and every one of you. We are glad that you're here. And our prayer is that you just enter or enter on in and receive a blessing from God. Amen? Amen. This time, Brother Ron is coming to help us to receive the Sunday evening tithe and offering you give us unto the Lord. God will bless you. It's time to pay our tithe, time to give to God. And let's do it as unto the Lord. Amen? And the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Brother Ron, sir, would you please pray? Ask God to bless the gift and the giver. Amen. Thank you for your giving. God bless you for it. I'd like to read to you tonight three verses of Scripture. First one is found in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. He said, Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Colossians 3, 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Philippians 1 and 17. But the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. I'd like to preach tonight for just a little while, not a long time tonight, on the title of a message, Set on the Right Things. Set on the Right Things. Reverend Meyer, sir, will you please pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. Amen. We all know that we are living in perilous times. Now, I wasn't really planning on sharing this, but you know, I was thinking about President Trump. We all know how that there was an assassination attempt on his life. And regardless of your political persuasions, we don't want anything to happen to people. What happened was a, a hate-fueled thing. And, and really, we look at all this stuff, what's happening in our world, and really, we live in a messed up world right now. People full of hate, well, I don't like Donald Trump. Well, well, that's your prerogative, but, you know, and we may not agree with a certain political candidate, but that does not mean we want harm to come to them, correct? And what caused that young man, 20 years old, to, to try to attempt to pres take the president's life is a sad thing. And, and that's just one thing that, that we read about and that we hear about that tells us that, that we are living in perilous times right now. And I really think that it is absolute time when we, as a people of God, that we need to be firm in our faith. More than ever, we need to have our mind and our heart set upon the right things. Can I get a witness? And I believe really that we are living in the last days and that we need more than ever, we need to look to the Lord for all things. And many times we come up short. We do not look to the Lord for all things. We just kind of float through life. We just kind of coast through life. And whatever happens, happens. No, we need to set our affections on the things which are above, not on the things that are down here on the earth. And we need to be firm in our faith for Almighty God. Praise the Lord. We are living in a time when people turn away from sound doctrine. They turn away from that which is right. People don't want to hear 
what's right any longer. They want to turn their ears and they want to listen to lies and they want to say, well, it's 2024 and I don't identify this, I don't identify that and, and it's, things are all kind of mixed up, if you will. They don't want to listen to right teaching. They don't want to listen to sound teaching. That's what it means, sound doctrine. They don't want to hear that God still requires of us. They don't want to hear about holiness. They don't want to hear about living for God. They want to do their own thing but I'm glad tonight uh, that we can get right with God. We can set our affections upon the Lord and God will never, never, never forsake us. Can I get a great big amen tonight? Amen. We need to pay attention to what God is telling us in his word. And we need to apply it to every aspect of our life. He said in the text, I am set. How many are set tonight? Yes, that means I am fixed. I'm not going to, to, to move away. I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to be set in that which is right. God has saved me. He put my feet upon the rock to stay. I'm grounded upon the word of God. I'm grounded in Jesus Christ. And I am set. And I'm going to do what God wants me to do. Regardless what anybody else does. Amen. You know, this is the way that it needs to be. We need to be set and not moving. No matter what. And there used to be a song that used to be sung years ago, I shall not be moved. And that has to be our attitude because I'm going to tell you right now, all kinds of things will come your way to try to get you to move. Try to get you move outside of the will of God. You know what? We need to be set in the will of God. I shall not be moved. I'm going to stay true to my God. I'm going to be set in my resolve for Jesus. Just like that song that we said, I am resolved. How many are resolved tonight? I am resolved no longer to linger. I am resolved to do the right thing. I am resolved to stay the course. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to surrender. I'm not going to retreat. But I I am resolved to live for God. In other words, we've got to have a made up mind. Amen. We're living in a day and age where people are wishy washy. Yes, sir. It's gross. That's, you know, that's one of my favorite adjectives that I like to use. When something is just gross, it's just gross. I talk to young people, and they are so fickle, if you will, one minute in, one minute out. One minute up, the other minute down. I, I think I would have a hard time being in the military right now. I probably would get arrested. Because these young people wouldn't be able to handle me. I, I feel sorry for the NCOs and leaders now. Because I just on and on, we just live in a mixed, <laughs> mixed up world, right? And people, people are just being just whatever comes their way, whatever they feel like is all about them. Let me tell you something. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's all about God, right? And we need to be resolved for the Lord. Can okay? someone say praise the Lord? We've got to have a made up mind to live for God. And you can't be witchy washy. You can't be in and out, up and down, left and right. We need to be set in the things of the Lord. We have to be resolved, first of all, that and set to serve the Lord. How are we going to serve the Lord? We are going to serve him with our whole heart. I believe that's the only way that we can do it. When you try to hold back and you keep back from God, it's not going to work. We need to serve him with our whole heart. Psalm 9 and 1 says, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. Wait a minute, God. With every fiber of my being with every fiber of my heart God I am going to praise you and so that means when it comes time to praise the Lord you don't have to pump and prime me I'm going to put these old lightning rods in the air I'm going to praise my God and the Bible said that everything they have breath let him praise the Lord how many have breath tonight we can praise God and we are going to show forth his marvelous works we are going to love him. We are going to praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noontime. I'm not one of you starts singing it with me. What is wrong with you? Praise him. Praise him with our whole heart. Yeah. All right, let's go back to the Trump rally. Again, whether you're a Trump fan or not, it doesn't really matter. You ever see folks at the Trump rallies? Yeah. Man, I want you to know they're all excited for this politician. 
Man, they stand out there in the heat. They stand out there in the cold, in the rain, to see this man that they think is great. And they, 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 they all the cheers and all these things going on. Oh, but don't let people get excited for God. They were a bunch of fanatics. Now, I'm not saying this to promote Trump, just, just so you know. It's just in the news right now, right? And they get all excited, uh, and they all uh, out there in the heat and the sun. We complain because we got to come to an air-conditioned building. We need to praise the Lord. We need to wait upon the Lord. We need to listen to him, and we need to obey him, and we need a soul win for him. I want you to know we need to win souls for Almighty God. People need to be saved. Aren't you glad that somebody told you about God? You know what? We need to do the same thing tomorrow night, 6.30. We're going to go soul winning. But some people say, well, I'm too tired. I have better things to do. Nah, I'm good. I I'm just going to stay in tonight. I'm just going to do my own thing. You can do whatever you want to do. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to love God. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to work for God. We're going to go out and tell somebody about Jesus. And I believe we keep at it and we're set that someone's going to get saved someone's going to be delivered someone's going to be set free because that's the kind of God that we serve we need to go on the highways and the byways and tell men and women about Jesus can the church say amen tonight um, I, I don't know I'm, it's just too hot to go soul winning I know it's so hard to ride around in an air conditioned car and roll on your window and say I'd like to invite you to church Okay, I'm going to be good. Let me go on. The bottom line is this. We need to be resolved and set in our devotion and resolved in our service to the Lord. How is your devotion to God? I'm not here to judge you. I want you to judge yourself. How is your service to the Lord? I believe that we owe God. We owe service to our God. We owe devotion to our God. We are debtors to him. We find from the word of God that we have been bought with a price. Uh, I thank God for my salvation that I have. Uh, I thank God that one day when I was lost in sins, uh, God came my way. Somebody invited me to church, uh, and I made my way to the house of the Lord. And before I left there that night, I'd given my life to God. I got saved, and over 40 years later, I'm standing here right now to tell you that God can still save. People will still come, but we need to invite them, and we belong to God because of the salvation. We've been bought by the price with a price, and now we belong to God. We owe God our devotion. Thank God for our deliverance. Because of all that, all that he's done for us, done for me, done for you, I'm saying that we need to serve him in the right way. Set in the right way. You know, Again, this is 2024. People want to do their own thing. They want to make their own rules. And now, you mean to tell me that these people have it all put together? They don't even know whether they're male or females. Right. They don't even know what gender they are. Yeah. I could tell you they're either a man or a woman. Right. Serious business. If they break it down to the DNA level, there's not mixed up. God didn't mix it up. Man mixed it up. And so here we are in 2024. People don't even know what they are. You mean to tell me they, they, they know what they're doing and they apply those same kind of principles to God? No, we're not going to be set that way. We're going to be set in the ways of God, in the word of God. Amen? And we need to serve him in the right way. And we are going to worship him in spirit and in truth and walk within according to the Bible. And God, help every one of us to live according to his divine word. I know there's times when we fail. But that's when we repent and we turn away and we don't do it any longer. And we get up and say, oh, my God, I'm sorry. I want to be set in the right way. I want to be set in the way that you set before me. And God, I ask you now one more time to forgive me, restore me, set my feet upon the right path. And God, I'll give you praise and glory and honor for restoration. Well, Pastor, I messed up. There ain't not one of us who've never messed up. That's what makes living for God so wonderful because he He's long-suffering. He is merciful. He is compassionate. And God can do something for you. But you've got to make up in your mind to do it. 
You know, we go through a lot of problems because we don't have a made up mind. Yes, we gotta be resolved and set to defend him. I really like in the book of Acts, and we've been studying that in the, in the Bible studies, and how that Peter very clearly told the Jews who Jesus was. And I liked it that Peter did not back down, and he preached it and told it the way that it was. You know what? We need to be the same way. We are going to let the world know that Jesus is our Savior. You know what? We cannot be ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of my beliefs before God. And people don't like it. You're being too forceful. You're being too straight. Well, thank God for the straight gospel, the straight word of God. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, you're right. And I thank God the right way for living for God set me free. People don't even like it straight any longer. They think, ah, who are you? Judge, jury, and executioner? Why are you being so harsh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why don't you just get saved? Amen. People find fault. They criticize. And people do that because they're not saved themselves. I know someone will probably get a hold of this video and find fault with me, but praise the Lord anyhow. <laughs> Peter didn't back down. You know, if you're living in sin, you're living in sin. What's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. Uh-oh. Sin is still, are we still in a holiness church? Sin is still wrong. Shack it up is still wrong. Y'all want to know what shack it up is, right? Who said no? You don't know what shack it up is? That's all right. Appreciate the honesty. Shack it up is when you're sleeping around with someone you're not married with. Oh, Evan said, oh, that's not right. That's wrong, right? That's wrong. Now, I don't know if any of you are doing that. Y'all is wrong. It's wrong. Lying is still wrong. Robbing God is still wrong. On and on and on. What's right is still right. We cannot be ashamed of our beliefs. And so people will say things and they'll criticize you. Well, that preacher didn't have any right to say that. Well, let me tell you something. What gives them the right to believe what they want to believe, but I can't believe what I want to believe? That just makes no sense. They can say, well, you can't say anything about the homosexuals. You can't say anything about the LGBTQ, XRYZ people. You can't say anything about that because that's what they believe. Well, bless your heart. You can believe whatever you want to believe. But I believe what thus saith the word of Almighty God. And we should not be ashamed of that. We ought to stand and be set in that because God delivered us from the world. God's word is still right. We don't have to back up. We can believe what we want to believe. And other people can believe what they want to believe. Whether it's right or wrong, they can believe it. Not ashamed. You're ashamed of our beliefs. And I really want you to know that I understand wisdom. I understand compassion. I understand all that. But if I was to preach the way that I used to preach 20 years ago, we'd really have an empty room. And it's already empty enough. What? We might have more. We had people then. And it was straight. Because I want you to know, hell is still hot. But heaven is still real. Hallelujah. I want everyone to know that our Jesus is all powerful. All power has been given unto him. How many are glad tonight that we serve a powerful God? He even has power to help you to meet the needs in your life right now. God knows what's going on in your life. Don't you think that he knows? Uh, you need to try to stop figuring it out. And you just need to surrender to the Lord and let God do something in your life. God is still God. We are not God, all right? Do what God wants you to do and be set in the right way. And God will do all that we allow him to do in our life. That's the clincher. We have to allow God. I think sometimes people just don't want to allow God. They're set in their ways. We don't need to be set in our ways. We need to be set in the ways of God. Amen. And say, well, this is just the word that I am. And that's the problem. You can't be the way you want to be. We need to be the way that God wants us to be. It's time 
that we allow him to move freely and operate freely in our life. And so God already knows what's going on. He already knows what sin is in our lives. Uh, give it to God. Cast it all upon him and say, all right, God, I'm tired of carrying around this burden. I'm tired of carrying around this garbage in my life. I'm tired. It's not working. But now, God, I'm going to surrender to you. I'm going to be set in you. I'm going to re be resolved in you. And when we do that, God says, yes, that's what I've been waiting for, for you to absolutely get rid of self. And I'll give it to God and put it on the altar and say, God, here am I in all my mess. I pray, God, put me back together again. Put me back the way that I'm supposed to be. Mm, for all you folks that want to find fault with my video, my live stream, we don't, I got it written right here. We don't have time for the fault finders and the critics. Do you hear what I say? Well, well, preacher, there's fault finders. You know there's fault finders? I do. They're on the internet. They're all over the place. But you know what? <laughs> In Jesus' day, they didn't have the internet. They didn't have YouTube. They didn't have all that mess. But there were still fault finders and critics. There were still those that found, found fault with God. You know, if they found fault with God, how much more are they going to find fault with us? They called him names. They called him Beelzebub. And they criticized him. But Jesus kept on preaching. Jesus kept on keeping on, fulfilling the mission that God the Father sent him to do. And I'm glad that he didn't listen to the critics or the fault finders. But he went all the way to pay the price for our sin. Guess what? The fault finders and the critics, and you might be one of them, so be it. They do not control. They do not regulate. And they do not uh, control our dedication to the service of our God. I'm going to live for God anyhow. The fault finders may fault find. The critics may criticize. But it has nothing to do with my dedication to God. I want to be set in the right way. How many want to be set with me? It's time to be set in the things of God. Why don't you make up in your mind right now to live for Jesus? Give it all. Surrender it all to him in this service tonight. I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus is still right. Amen. We have a made up mind. We're not going to back up. We're going to do what God wants us to do. Amen. And I want to be counted among the faithful. And I want my God to be able to count on me. Don't you want God to count on you? But he can't count on some of you. There are people that come to church here. God bless them. We all need help. But God can't count on them. Pastor, you talking about me? Thou knowest. Can God count upon you? We need to be resolved to defend the Lord, to serve the Lord. Set in the right things. Surrender those things that are in the way. We all can find reasons why we can't do something. Resolved. I am resolved to what follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. That's what we need to be. Don't get caught up in a bunch of junk. And when the time comes, people name, I was told recently someone didn't believe in the rapture. Oh. Uh, I, I happen to be one who believes in the rapture. I know the Bible doesn't say the word rapture, but I believe that Jesus is coming again. I believe he's to come to take his church home, uh, and we're going to meet him in the air. And the Bible said we'll, so, uh, we'll be with the Lord forevermore. It could be tonight. It could be tomorrow. We need to be ready. We know not the time when the Son of Man is coming back, but we need to be ready. You need to be set in the right things. Uh, and guess what? He will rapture us away, if we belong to him. Uh, and I want you to know he has gone to prepare a place for us. Uh, he said if it were not so I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. It's already there. Yes. But it's only for those that are set in the right things. And then we need to be resolved. All right, to serve the Lord, defend the Lord, and resolved and set in being faithful. Let me tell you something right now. The devil, Satan, he does not like faithful men and women. 
faithful. I made a plea this morning for people to come to church on Sunday night. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I'm not going to go through all the excuses. I'm not trying to dog anybody out, per se. They're not here, so no sense in dogging them out because they're not here. But you'd be amazed at the excuses that I hear. I'm tired. I know it takes so much effort to sit there in that pew for an hour. Because we don't get tired. That's really not the point. The excuses, I can't come to church because I got convicted in the morning service. Well, you got convicted, don't you think that you need to be in the house of the Lord? And on and on and on, the excuses, you'd be amazed. The devil doesn't like faithful men and women. Don't you realize that we are in a spiritual warfare? The Bible tells us in Ephesians 6 and 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We're in a war. Yes, we need to be faithful. In the military, you may go to war. And when you turn around, you want your battle buddy to be there. You want someone to be there to help you in the battle. Well, guess what? I turn around sometimes. I, I want to see somebody there to help me in the battle. But the foxhole is empty, if you will, and they're not there. And you're wondering, where are they? Where is their faithfulness? Not just to me, but to the Lord. Yes, the enemy will try to chip away at your faith. Yes, He's a faith robber, if you please. He'll try to rob you of your faith to try to get your eyes on something else. He's a liar. It's time to be on guard and say, wait a minute, devil. Get thee behind me. You are not welcome. You know what? We have to be resolved and we have to be set in the faith. You come and lie and bog your brain down with a bunch of trash. How many know what I'm talking about? You ever allow a thought to run rampant in your mind? And it affects the way you worship God. It affects the way you praise God. It affects everything about your life. Wait a minute. we got to tell the devil, devil, get away from me. Leave me alone. And we have to utilize uh, and think about encouraging things and think on things of a good report. And if we set ourselves on a good report, when the devil comes, uh, we can say, wait a minute, devil, I'm not thinking about that mess. Leave me alone. I resist you. You have to flee. I'm going to think of things of a good report. Bible said in Philippians 4 and 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, and whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Too many times, oh man, we are set on the wrong things. Many times we need a change of mind. We need a change of heart. We need the Holy Spirit to renew us and refresh us. Praise the Lord, right? And we need to walk in the light as he is in the light. And we need to remain set in the faith. Change your thinking. Everything is wrong. Everything is negative. Wait a minute. I'm going to think on something good. What's good? Jesus is good. Living for God is good. I like what the Apostle Paul said. He said, I fought the good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Church, let me tell you, we need to do the same thing. Stay in the fight. All right, let's go back to Trump. Again, I'm not promoting Trump. I'm just utilizing the news story. He got shot and all kinds of news reports. Some people said it was staged. Oh, on and on and on. But what did he do? He got up and he put his fist in the air. And he said, fight, fight, fight. All right, say, well, well, again, again, vote for whoever you want to vote for. But you know what? I like that. Right there in the middle of adversity, in the middle of something bad going on, he still had the wherewithal to say, fight. I want you to know we need to be like the Apostle Paul. I have fought the good fight. Fight, 
Fight who? Not each other. Not the church world. Not against God. Let's fight the devil. Let's fight the enemy. And with the help of the Lord, we can be victorious. Stay in the fight. Finish the course. Keep the faith. During these times, our God is faithful. And the Bible said great is his faithfulness. And now I believe that we need to be faithful to him. Faithful in all things. We talked about it this morning about prayer. Faithful to prayer. Faithful in love. And faithful reaching out. And faithful to keep the vision alive. How is your vision? There are people dying and going to hell. And I don't think some of you even care. They're kind of, kind of exclusive. They're inclusive, I should say, right? I don't think people even care. Do you even care that people are dying and going to hell? Does it not bother you? We need to be faithful in keeping the vision alive. It's a blessing to serve. It's a blessing to be faithful to our Savior. And when we keep the fight... And when we finish the course and we keep the faith, there is a promise. 2 Timothy 4 and 8. Henceforth there is later for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. What am I saying? What's the apostle telling us? We have something to look forward to. One of these days this life is going to be over. And one of these days we'll be ushered into the realm of Almighty God. And we'll say, hear him say, enter in, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord. And there'll be no more sorrow and no more tears and no more heartache. And we'll be with the Lord, praising him forevermore. And as we pray, and as we're faithful, remember the promises of God that will help us to stay set, to help us to stay resolved, to help us to be immovable, to have the right desire to keep our hope alive and to keep the fires burning. But my question is, what are you set and fixed upon right now? I'm going to tell you that Jesus is still the answer. Praise God. And we have to be resolved to be set on him. Setting our affections on the things which are above. None of the things that are down here. Where's your vision at? Well, I got a bunch of problems, preacher. Well, get in line. We all have things we have to deal with. Why don't you give it to God? And set your affections on the right things. Set your affections where they're supposed to be. And the exhortation tonight is, as you set yourself on the right things, God is going to bless you. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed in reverence to the Lord tonight.